It was early in the morning, about 9.30 in the morning. And all of a sudden I had tears in my eyes streaming down. There is absolutely no reason for them, but they were tears. I was born in a moderately spiritual family, religious family. I come from a Sikh background. My parents were Sikh. Very grateful that Sikhism is a very accepting religion. Uh, very grateful for that. But uh, I was not amused by um, different aspects of religion like um, uh, rites and rituals. Uh, I was not about that. And at very young age, I moved to Canada at age of 14. I drifted away from religion totally. I was agnostic. And on a bad day, I was a borderline atheist. And that's how I stayed in all my younger days. And, uh, and then there was a need to get ahead and make money, get ahead, make money, get ahead, get a good name for myself. But by the age of uh, 41, 42, I'm very lucky that I had made more money than an immigrant boy could have ever dreamt. I had a uh, good family. I had good children. I had a nice house overlooking the ocean. But something else got added to me. More I earned, more I had. I also felt a little sense of emptiness. It was not apparent to anybody outside of myself, but I knew that there was a sense of emptiness in me that I was not able to fill. And very foolishly, I tried to fill it with more and more money or more and more stuff. Not knowing that more I tried to fill it, more it was laughing at my bankruptcy, at my sheer poverty, spiritual poverty. But then a small incident happened with me. It was early in the morning, about 9.30 in the morning, and my wife was downstairs getting the breakfast ready. I was upstairs getting ready. I had my shirt on, looking for some pants to wear. And all of a sudden I had tears in my eyes streaming down. There is absolutely no reason for them, but they were tears. There was no physical reason. There was no financial reason. Family was good. Everything was good. Everything had never been any better. But where are these tears coming from? And I had always thought of tears as a sign of weakness, because that's what I was taught. Much later, I will change my position on uh, tears also. But that day, they felt like I was being weak. I sat at the edge of the bed. I talked to myself. I said, Dave, get a hold of yourself, man. Be a man. You're a man. Uh, you don't cry. When have you last cried? This and that. I talked to myself. I gave myself a little smack on my face and washed my face and off I went. Once again, I put on a face of a businessman and a family man, and I got lost in the business world again. Little did I know that something in me had stirred. I totally forgot about the incident. I got busy in my life of a business person, of construction, of developing, but I'm so grateful that the universe did not forget. God did not forget. Exactly six months later, I am going through the same morning thing and again, tears, tears in my eyes. And as I sat at the edge of the, edge of the bed, pondering these strange tears, I also had a feeling of dread almost, feeling that I had missed the mark in life. Having achieved everything that materially somebody could want, I felt like I have totally missed it. So much so 
Something inside of me kept telling me that this is not what you came here for. You didn't come here for business, to make money and to become all about that. But yet I did not know how to turn, which way to turn. After this incident, I even went up to my wife and I said, honey, I need help. I'm, I'm having trouble because I couldn't go to any priest because I wasn't religious. I couldn't go to any pundit and uh, or any holy man because I didn't believe in that. And I had no bearings in any other part uh, in any religion. And I said, honey, I need some help. My wife had never seen me weak. She had always seen me go, 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 achieve, 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 and do, do, do. And uh, she obviously, she tried to, you know, Sunny, everything will be okay. Don't worry, you're strong. It's just a phase you're going through. I knew my wife could not help me. I know she loves me, but I also knew the help that I needed was beyond what even she knew at that time. After that day, I started feeling this sense of emptiness about me. Having achieved everything an immigrant would want, having good friends, good money, good house, good family, good name in the community, yet where is this emptiness coming from? Where is this uh, barrenness coming from? I should feel complete. I should feel full, having achieved everything that anybody would. But I felt bankrupt. I felt I have screwed up, but I did not know how to remedy it. At this moment, I was given a gift from my wife. She started going to yoga classes. She went to hot yoga. And she invited me, thinking her thinking fully well that I will say no. But I surprised her by saying yes. So I started going to this hot yoga classes early in the morning, 6 a.m. classes with her, hour and a half. In yoga, there is one pose that you do at the end. It is called the Shavasana pose, uh, dead body pose. It is basically you have done your whole exercise, you have sweated out a, probably a half a bucket of uh, sweat and now you lie down fully spent and you pretend to be a dead body. And uh, you can do that for a couple of minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, entirely up to you. Teachers would do the class, shut off the lights and go away. There used to be two sets of people. People were in a hurry to get out of the yoga class. They will go and try to grab a shower first. I decided that I'd rather be second, so I would lie there for an extra 10 minutes to... In those moments, I felt like I needed to talk to something or somebody, internal dialogue. I obviously did not know God, but what I decided is I will begin my journey from what I know. I knew when I loved, truly loved, even though I had no idea of what true love was, I've had glimpses of selfless love in my life. But most of my love was tainted by my possession, by my ego, by my judgment. I knew that I did not know true love, but every human being is afforded a few glimpses. And I had seen love in its purity. I also knew when I told the truth, it felt good. I also knew when I was honest in my dealings with everybody, that felt good. I also knew that when I was in the nature, out for walks, trekking, hiking, walking, that felt good. I decided that I'll give these three or four things the name God. I don't know God that they talk about in holy books, but I will make these four things in their most pure form into the name God. And that's what became God to me. Lying in that dead body pose, the Shavasana pose, I started surrendering to God. I said, God, I surrender. I ask that these qualities take a hold in me, take a footing in me, make a footing. 
Uh, I surrender to these qualities. May these qualities work through me. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. Never thinking that something can ever come out of this. This went on for a few months, maybe six, seven, eight months. And uh, my yearning, I know, was pure. I know that my yearning was pure. Six to eight months after this 10 minutes of surrendering during the Shavasana, the dead body pose, one night I was afforded an experience that changed me, fully changed me. I had a business in Alberta, Canada. I had uh, Calgary, Alberta. We used to have an office there too. I would sometimes go there in the morning and come back by return flight, the last flight. And by the time I would come home, it would be like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I came home, uh, wife was watching a movie. I told her to relax, finish. I went upstairs to my bedroom, master bedroom. I changed my night, night clothes and I was hit the bed. Obviously, I was tired from the day. Normally, I would watch uh, sports page or I would watch some news and fall asleep. But this night, I looked outside and I saw a beautiful moonlit night. Far away, I could see the ocean and the moonlight was dancing in the ocean. And there was a gentle breeze outside and the leaves, every time they moved, the, the, the moonlight shined off it. I decided that I will step outside. I will step outside, just sit in the balcony for a little bit and, and just watch this magic. I remember stepping out into the balcony and trying to grab a chair. And in that moment, I was transported. Where I went, I don't know. But there was this sense of vastness. And by the time I caught, got a hold of myself a little bit, all I could know was that I had monsoon of tears just coming down my cheeks and my eyes. And the only words that were coming out of my mo mouth as if I'm in a trance was thank you, 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 thank you. Only words that were visible to me were thank you, thank you. I experienced joy like I had never experienced before. I would prefer to say I did not know the meaning of joy till that moment. Up till then, the birth of two of my sons, watching them come into this earth or into this world, was probably the greatest joyful moments of my life. I had never felt that, but this surpassed everything. And it was, I had this overpouring of joy that I could not contain. And these tears were the overflowing of joy. And the only thing that I could murmur was thank you, 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 thank you. After a while, and I don't know how long I was away, I could feel my mind very, very far away, saying, Dave, do you know where you are? Do you know what's going on? And slowly, slowly, the mind, which started out miles away, started coming closer and closer. And as the mind came closer, this experience started to fade a bit. And by the time the mind hit me fully, and I was again present in my mind, the experience had drifted away beautifully. From where it came, I did not know. I didn't deserve that joy. I did not. The life I had lived till that day was not worthy of this vision. This, uh, this opening. And uh, I can tell you that if it was anything, it was grace. I was not worthy, but grace was afforded me. After that day, a new Dave took birth. Old Dave disappeared. 
There was Dave before that, that was all about business and work and getting ahead and, you know, achieving and all of that. And then there was a new Dave. New Dave that even I could not recognize. But that experience ignited a thirst like I had never experienced before. I was seeking God everywhere. I was seeking that experience that whatever I had, I wanted to experience it again, make myself worthy of it again. I would do anything. First thing I noticed after that experience was how I had defiled myself in the name of marketing, how little half-truths and half-lies had seeped into my being. I often tell people that chances of you meeting a devil and then you selling your soul to him are very low. But we human beings, in the name of business, money, prestige, trying to get ahead, we sell ourselves one hair at a time, willingly. And before you know it, this beautiful soul of yours, which should have been like a brand new, new spun cotton, has gotten these stains all over it. Little sprinkles of lies and, and lustful behavior and all of that, all about ego, all about me. I woke up and I saw how I had accumulated this dirt and I had a rebellion against that. I wanted to rebel. I had this over yearning desire to leave everything behind and leave. I wanted to take off every cloth, leave all the money behind and just walk away from family, from from business, from, I wanted to let the world know that I take nothing away from here. I leave it all behind. But something in me also said, Dave, that would be cowardice. You will be a coward. Something told me that my life is my test. My life is my test and I cannot leave the test and say I have passed you will feel like a coward always. I had to stay, change myself, change the world around me, change everything that I have to do, but I have to stay and write my exam wherever I am standing today. It took real strength for me to stay, but I stayed. From that point on, my thirst took me all over to God knows how many ashrams. I am looking for something to quench my thirst. Even if I found a dew drop lying on top of a leaf sitting on the, on the ground, I would lick it. Anywhere there was a mention of God or of these sublime teachers that started coming into my life, I worshipped the ground that they walked on. I sought out every teacher I could. I sought out every learning I could. I did try to cleanse myself. I, so that my, my mind and this body can be worthy of divine habitation. So that God would deem it worthy to come back and grace me again. And uh, everything b became about that. Life has been kind and many realizations came my way. Many, many realizations came. Meditation came. For days and days I went into meditation. All divine plan. One other unique thing happened. When I had this thirst ignited in me, I started writing journals. Just me talking to myself, trying to clean myself my battles with my ego, battles with my vices, sometimes glimpses of new realizations. I started writing them all down. 
Any time I had a question, I wrote it down. Any time I felt like talking to God, I started writing it down. After about six years of writing journals, one day they all stopped. All of my journal writing stopped. I know why it stopped. Because that which I needed to realize, that which I had to find out, I had discovered. And for that I shall be grateful. I am so grateful. Today, and even this video, I do this as Zara Dushtra said, my cup runneth over. I share these blessings that were given to me, I share it with fellow travelers so that they may learn from my experience and have their own journey to their own God. I wish you all that journey.